All right, let's dive into this ML ops thing. We're going deep with this weights and biases article, so get ready. If your business even thinks about using AI, this is going to be important. You've probably heard ML ops thrown around, but what's the big deal? Think of it like this. Remember DevOps, making software development smoother and faster. ML ops takes those principles and applies them to machine learning. It's tempting to think it's a direct swap, but it's more like taking those DevOps principles and, well, dropping them into a whole new world. The goals are similar, speed, efficiency, we all want that, but the playing field is different. And that's where this article gets so interesting. It digs into those differences. Teams, the development process, even the infrastructure. Yeah, and when you look at the teams, you see how data-centric MLOps really is. You've got your product managers, the visionaries, right? And of course, software engineers building the framework. But then you bring in the specialists, data engineers making sure that data pipeline is pristine, and then the data scientists digging for insights and you know building those models, like assembling a crack team where everyone's laser-focused on data. Makes sense. Like I was saying, garbage in, garbage out. But we're talking mountains of data, not garbage, fueling those AI engines. Mm. Speaking of data, the development process is another area where traditional software and ML ops take different paths. The article really hits on how much more experimental ML model development is. Oh, it's night and day. In traditional software development, you're defining rules. It's all very, you know, black and white in the code. With machine learning, you're creating a system that learns the rules from the data. And that learning, it's trial and error, constant tweaking. And here's the kicker. Data changes constantly. So ML ops demands this constant vigilance. Got to make sure your models aren't drifting off course as the data landscape shifts. And that brings us to infrastructure. I yeah. know, not the most exciting word, but this is where it gets interesting. Imagine not just lines of code, but massive data sets and constantly evolving models. Exactly. Think about version control for a second. In traditional software development, you're mainly worried about code, libraries, that kind of thing. But in MLOps, you're keeping track of these huge data sets and models that are always being refined. You're basically versioning knowledge itself, which is wild when you think about it. That's where tools like MLflow and DVC come in. They're built to handle this complex web of data, code, and models. Without them, you'd be lost. Totally. Like trying to build a skyscraper on quicksand if you don't have the right tools. Yeah. Okay, so let's get practical. The article breaks down the MLOps pipeline into these clear stages. It's yeah. like a journey. And it all starts with a foundation data engineering. You can't have a house without a foundation. Right. And you can't have machine learning without solid data engineering. This is where you tackle data collection, cleaning, transforming it into something your AI can actually use. It's the unsung hero of the ML world. Get this stage right. And you're setting yourself up for success. It's like prepping ingredients for a Michelin star chef. Right? Yeah. Mess that up and no amount of culinary magic can save it. Spot on. And once you've got those pristine ingredients, we move on to the main course model development. Data scientists step in, experimenting with different algorithms, architectures. It's about unlocking the hidden patterns within the data. This is where the data scientists really get creative, right? Lots of trial and error, testing, seeing what works. Absolutely. And this whole process, with all its experiments and variations, highlights why meticulous tracking is so crucial. Each experiment, with its specific setup and results, becomes another piece of the puzzle. You don't want to find a breakthrough and then realize you can't replicate it. Exactly. And once you've got a model that's really showing promise, one that's proven itself, it's time to deploy it, let it loose in the real world. This is where it all comes together. But this isn't a set it and forget it situation, is it? The article makes it clear that continuous monitoring is key. Right. Even the best model can't just rest. The world of data is constantly changing. What worked perfectly yesterday might not work tomorrow as new patterns emerge. Continuous monitoring is your early warning system, letting you detect and respond to those changes. It's about keeping your finger on the pulse, making sure your AI is healthy and performing at its best. So we've got this pipeline, data in, model trained, model deployed, and we're keeping an eye on it constantly. It's a lot. But this article doesn't just stop at the theory. It breaks down how companies are actually using ML ops, like at different levels, right? It's like climbing a ladder, kind of. Exactly. You start at level zero, what you might call manual ML ops. And this is where a lot of businesses start, I think. A few models, maybe updated a few times a year, if that. Lots of manual work. Definitely prone to bottlenecks, but hey, you got to start somewhere. Right. But as soon as you want to do more, like really scale up those AI ambitions, that's where things get really cool. Level one is where that automation starts to come in. Pipeline automation. Yeah. Level one is all about bringing in the tools and processes to really streamline things. Think like active performance monitoring. 
you're spotting issues before they become huge problems. Imagine your fraud detection model suddenly sees a new pattern, right? At level one, your system can just retrain itself, adapt to that new data, all without skipping a beat. So faster reactions, less manual work. Okay, and then at the top of this MLOps mountain, we've got level two, full CICD pipeline automation. That just sounds high tech, even saying it. It is. It stands for continuous integration slash continuous delivery. And at level two, it's like having a machine that optimizes itself, you know? Businesses at this level are updating models, maybe even multiple times a day, constantly iterating. Think Netflix, learning what movies you like, or Airbnb adjusting prices on the fly. That's level two. Okay, so we've covered a lot. What MLOps is, how it's different from traditional software development, the pipeline, those levels of maturity. This isn't just a fad, but for those listening who are thinking, okay, that's great, but what's in it for me? Why should businesses care about this? What's the payoff? Results. It's that simple. It's not just about, you know, fancy models. It's about using those models to make a real impact on your business. And MLOps delivers on that and on multiple fronts, actually. The article really emphasized faster time to market as a major advantage. Oh, absolutely. Imagine you've got this amazing new AI-powered feature, right? In the past, getting that from idea to launch, it could take months. But with a good MLOps pipeline, you can shorten that timeline significantly. And speed is everything these days. Having a great idea isn't enough if your competition gets there first. Exactly. But it's not just speed, it's accuracy and efficiency, too. Continuous monitoring, automated retraining, it all means your models are always learning. So it's not just launching a model and hoping for the best. You're constantly making it smarter. Right. And that translates into real business value, whether it's better recommendations for customers, optimizing your pricing, or catching fraud before it happens. ML Ops helps you get the most out of your AI. Which brings us to another benefit the article talks about, optimized costs. This is where automation and efficiency really shine, I think. Automating tasks, making sure resources are being used well, it all adds up. It's like the difference between a gas guzzler and a fuel-efficient car. You want your AI to be the fuel-efficient one. We've covered a lot of ground here, the difference between DevOps and MLOps, the stages in the pipeline, everything. What stood out to you most from all of this? Anything particularly surprising or insightful? You know, for me, it's the potential that's really exciting. We're talking about taking AI from these, like, side projects to something that's core to the business, you know? Yeah. Seamlessly integrated. That's a big deal. It's like we're moving beyond those early days of AI into something much bigger. But in a good way, right? It's like those benefits of the speed, the insights, they're not just for the tech giants anymore. Exactly. And with that comes responsibility, right? We talked about those different ML ops levels, but the reality is a lot of companies are still figuring this out. The tech is changing so fast and you need real expertise to build and manage these systems well. It's a bit of a wild west out there, but instead of gold rushes, we've got data rushes. And not everyone knows how to pan for those golden insights, as you said. So for those listening who are thinking, okay, ML ops of the future, got it, but where do I even start? What advice would you give them based on this article? What are the key takeaways? I think the first thing is understanding your data. What do you have? Where is it? How can you make it work for you? Because it doesn't matter how fancy your ML ops pipeline is if you don't have that good data foundation. Like that saying, you can't make bricks without straw. You can't build a successful AI strategy without a solid data strategy. Exactly. And the second thing, a strong team is essential. You need that technical expertise, data engineers, data scientists, ML engineers, but you also need people who get the business side, who can take those insights and turn them into action. Bridging that gap between tech and business, making sure everyone's on the same page, so important. Absolutely. And finally, don't be afraid to start small. You know, you don't have to go all in on level two automation right away. Find those areas where AI can make a difference and build up your MLOps capabilities from there. Learn as you go. It's a marathon. Not a sprint, right? Well, this Weights and Biases article has given us a lot to think about the potential of MLOps, the challenges, the possibilities. As we wrap up, what's the one thing you want our listeners to walk away with today? That MLOps is more than just some tech industry buzzword, you know? It's a real game changer. It's how we can unlock the real power of AI and drive results. No matter where you're at with AI, whether you're just starting out or you're a seasoned pro, MLOps has something to offer. It's about making AI accessible and ultimately shaping the future. A future where AI is just a normal part of everything we do. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive into ML Ops. And until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep pushing the boundaries of what's possible with AI.